Hi everybody! This is going to be a very, very late bookshelf tour. I think I did a bookshelf tour of my classic shelf this time last year, so this is a long time coming, but I hopefully will be doing the rest of it, depending on how long this video is going to be. I might cut it up, we'll have to just wait and see. In this video I'm hoping to do that shelf there. You've seen the classic shelf, it hasn't changed too much since last year, so I'm not going to bother redoing that one. So hopefully it'll be this one, this one, this one and maybe the one down there as well. So let's just get started. So we're going to start off with this shelf which is the hardback shelf. This isn't all the hardbacks I own obviously but this is a nice kind of collection of hardbacks that I own. Starting on the left here we have a copy of The Little Princess by Francis Hodgson. Frances Hodgson Burnett, which I showed in my most recent video, I think. And we have The Snow Queen by Michael Cunningham. The first book I have is The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. The Complete Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. We have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I'm just going to move you down a minute. There we go. We have an upside down edition of Jane Austen's Seven Novels, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm actually going to turn this round. Jesus, that's heavy. We have the Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. And we have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. These three are all Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Classics. Then we have a collection of fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen. We have fairy tales by Carol Ann Duffy. Can you tell I love fairy tales? Next is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. Next we have The Shore by Sarah Taylor, which is a collection of short stories. Next we have How To Be Both by Ali Smith, and this is the edition with the older story starting in it. Next we have The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick. Also Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. I love these kind of books. They have really, really beautiful illustrations in, as you can see. And I believe Brian Selznick's releasing a new book very, very soon, so I hope to pick that up. We have Prisoners in the Palace by Michaela McCall, with a lovely reflection of my tripod there. Beautiful. Roses by G.R. Mannering, which I love and have a review of on this channel. The Buried Giant by Keizu Ishiguru. And finally we have S by J.J. Abrams, um, also known as The Ship of Thesis by V.M. Stracker. So this next shelf has a lot of childhood books. Not all of them, a lot of my childhood books are kind of in storage because um, I don't like them taking too much room up on my shelves because I just think what room they take up, like books that I actually read could be taken up in. Um, but I do have a few on my shelves so I'm just going to get started. First of all we have this nice kind of figurine of a knight. Um, I used to collect these when I was a kid, I used to love them, I have quite a few. Um, so he's just on my shelf. So first of all we have these giant collections of fictional diaries. I think they're called My Story books or something like that and they are a collection of fictional diaries by women uh, for children. So they're basically historical fiction um, and I love them as a kid. The first we have is Victorian Workhouse which is a diary of Edith Lorimer and these don't actually have authors on so I apologise for that. We have Anne Boleyn and Me, the diary of Eleanor Valjean in London 1525. We have Suffragette which is the diary of Dottie Baxter. We have Transported, the diary of Elizabeth Harvey, Australia 1790. Mayflower, the diary of Patience Whipple 1620. We have Blitz, the diary of Edie Benson, London 1940. We have The Tudor Queen which is the diary of Eva du Pebble. We have The Bloody Tower which tells the diary of Tilly Middleton in London 1553. We have The Mill Girl, the diary of Elizabeth Halstead, and this was personally my favourite when I was a kid. We have The Plague, the diary of Alice Payton. We have War Nurse, the diary of Kitty Langley. And we have Voyage on the Great Titanic, the diary of Margaret Brady, 1912. We then have some Doctor Who books. Again, I had lots more of these, but some are in storage, and these are the ones that take precedence on my shelf. The first is The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Rayner. Then we have Feast of the Drowned by Stephen Cole. The Price of Paradise by Colin Brake. Martha in the Mirror by Justin Richards. The Monsters Inside by Stephen Cole. Only Human by Gareth Roberts. And Winner Takes All by Jacqueline Rayner. Next we have Wild by Jay Griffiths, which doesn't really fit on my childhood shelf at all because it's actually quite an adult travel memoir, but never mind. The next set of books we have are the Lux series by Anna Godberson. I read these when I was about 14, so they do class as childhood books. First we have the Lux, then we have Rumours, we then have Envy, and the fourth book in the series is Splendor. I seem to think Envy was my personal favourite, I can't really remember why. Next is Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. 
We have two books by George Layton, The Swap and The Fib, and I love these. My year six teacher introduced me to these and I absolutely adored them, they're a collection of short stories. Next is Ruby Red, T Tales from the Weed Water by Henrietta Branford. I loved this book so much, um, mainly because she shared my name, but yeah. <laughs> Then we have The Dancing Bear by Michael Morfugo. We have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl, which is actually a newer version I bought for university. I do have an old one somewhere in my room as well, but this is a new version that I bought for my children's literature module. We have Teacher's Pet by Jenny Dale. Was it Animal Ark or something like that? There was a series of books that were like all about different animals um, and I used to absolutely love them. We have A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. We have Why the Whales Came and the Ghost of Grania O'Malley by Michael Morfugo. We have A Yankee Candle in the Scent of Christmas Eve. <laughs> the next book is Molly Moon's Incredible Book of Hypnotism by Georgia Bing and I absolutely adored this series when I was younger. I think I read this when I was about 11 and just loved it to pieces. I also have the sequel Molly Moon Stops the World. Um, I think I bought the third book of the series but I never got too far past that and now I think there's about six books in the series so we have Please Mrs Butler which is a collection of poetry surrounding a school. We have a treasury of stories for five-year-olds which I can't actually show you because it's literally wedged in there so that is unfortunate. We have Sleepovers which is one of my favourite Dracoming Wilson books ever. I absolutely loved it mostly because I identified with the main character because I had a friend like the evil character so yeah. Next is Ruby the Red Fairy which <laughs> It's by Daisy Meadows. Now I don't think that's a real name, uh, but that's the only author I can find on the cover. And then we have a couple of Dicking Smith books at the end, Mr. Ape and George Speaks. But to start off we have some number 7 Beautiful Skin Radiance Exfoliator, uh, what every bookshelf needs, I hope you'll agree. Starting over here we have The Man in the Empty Suit by Sean Farrell. We have Growing Pains by Billy Piper, uh, which is her autobiography because I was quite obsessed with her when uh, I was younger. We have Hyacinth Bucket's Book of e Etiquette, uh, which is a tie-in book to the BBC series Keeping Up Appearances, which was a 90s programme. Um, which I loved as a kid and I still love to watch now and again, it's brilliant um, and this is kind of like a jokey book of etiquette that Hyacinth has supposedly written for the socially less fortunate it says at the bottom so yeah. Next is the Oxford Book of Christmas Poems, have Wither by Lauren de Stefano, The Library of Unrequited Love by Sophie Divery, The Adventures of Robin Hood by Roger Lanson Green, then we have Infinite Sky by CJ Flood. This was, I think, included in one of the very first hauls I ever did on this channel. Then we have The Big Over Easy by Jasper Ford. We have The Door That Led to Were by Sally Gardner. Next we have The End of Mr. Y by Scarlett Thomas. Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Uh, again, a book that I haven't read yet, but hopefully will maybe around... Halloween time. It's quite a spooky book, I believe, or it's more like a thriller, I suppose, but... Yeah, definitely, definitely want to read it as soon as possible. North by Seamus Heaney, which is a collection of Irish poetry. Equus by Peter Schaffer. Change of Heart by Jodie Pickle. Therese Rucla by Emile Zola. And then I have some Harry Potter books, as you can see, not all of them. Um, I have the first four and then the seventh. Um, I think I did once have The Order of the Phoenix. Um, I think I read it as a kid, didn't particularly like it, and then gave it away. I've never ever owned the sixth one, uh, Half Blood Prince? I oh god, how can I not know? I'm going to be shunned off booktube forever. Starting off with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which was my personal favourite. You can tell by how yellow the pages are and how bent they are on the inside. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and finally Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Then moving over here we have a collection of Shakespeare plays um, written for children. I'm not going to be able to get these out now. The first one we have is Romeo and Juliet. Ah, hang on, there we go. We have A Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet, The Twelfth Night. We have Macbeth, Henry V and Antony and Cleopatra. I must admit, as much as I did enjoy reading these as a kid, they were much more helpful um, during my uni years when I was doing Shakespeare. Couldn't be bothered to read the actual book and just wanted to refresh my memory of the storyline. These were invaluable. So, so good. <laughs> Next is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I think I have about 50 copies of this, but this is just one of them. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The Decline of the English Murder by George Orwell. 
Blackboard Blunders by Richard Benson. Next we have Mermaids, which is the myths, the legends and the lore, and more about the origins of mermaids. Uh, it looks at them in Greek mythology, as well as them in kind of popular culture and just the history of them more than anything. Then we have Monstrous Beauty by Elizabeth Farmer. Mr Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. And we have More Than This by Patrick Ness, which is actually signed, which is quite exciting. So guys, I'm going to leave it there for now. I think I've done quite a few shelves uh, this video. I don't want you to get too bored. There'll probably be a part three of this because I have a couple of shelves by my window that I'm going to try and get done as well. But this is more kind of childhood books and just random... Uh, random miscellaneous books I guess. I hope you've enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up if you have, that looks really weird. I do have lots of more stuff down here to show you as you can see but um, a lot of this is annuals and like just like just weird like magazines and things like that so whether or not I'll actually show you them uh, I'm not quite sure. A few books here and graphic novels here and then just like random dictionaries of science and Mr. Men books so we'll see about that. Um, if you do want to see that shelf let me know um, if you are interested in seeing Mr. Men books um, but maybe I might leave that one out because all that stuff over there is just like major childhood kind of annuals and things but if you want to see it then let me know uh thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye